one uh, wasn't actually planning on doing any filming today. Uh, I, I was working on the, the bead board in the maid's hall and uh, I know I'm coming off a little bit somber. It's because uh, I'm a little, uh, little sad today. Um, now, don't worry, nothing with family. All my family's doing good, father's doing great. Um, but you guys know how much I care about the history of, of my house and my neighborhood. And um, one of the very historic uh, large houses uh, down the block is uh, currently burning to the ground as we speak, in fact. Um, and uh, I went over there, and uh, you're probably seeing some of the footage now, but um, uh, right as I stopped this uh, clip that you're seeing, uh, I saw most of the building collapse. Um, it's sad, it was uh, owned by an old steamboat captain uh, by the name of Lawler, um, and him along with the Sheehan uh, brothers, they were twins who had a really large house that's still there on the end of my block. Um, they're the ones who owned all of this land. They're the ones who sold this land to uh, Mr. Hall, um, who then sold the parcel that my house sits on to Mr. Brown. Um, so it's a huge part of the history here and I don't know, just going over there and seeing, I mean, it's been abandoned for a while. It's, in, it's been in really rough shape, but to see the, the newel posts burning and the shutters that are like mine burning in the windows and uh, it just kind of frazzles me a bit because I can, you know, think like of how much my city and my neighborhood has lost over the years from things like this and injustice. Ah, St. Louis carries so many scars when it comes to these sort of things, so many great historical buildings. Of course, scars from other things too, like don't, don't let me discount that, but of course me being so into history, these things mean a lot to me, you know? My city means a lot to me, and, and the urban fabric of my city means a lot to me. And it just is, I don't know, it's just sad seeing something like that happen, you know, when there's no reason for it. You know, at some point I want to do a, a tour of my neighborhood, and. That was a, one of the buildings I know an okay amount of history on. Not like my building, but I know some history on it because he was a prominent man and, you know, he helped develop the area. So uh, it's six, it's, it just sucks to see his legacy go up in flames. And um, I don't know, maybe it, in some ways it pushes me to be um, better here because I want to make sure that Mr. Brown's legacy and that this house's history is preserved for future generations because. Uh, Who's gonna Who's gonna look up an empty lot and try to figure out what it was? Um, it's a lot harder to do that research, and uh, believe me, I know I've tried. Um, so, yeah, somber note, uh, but we'll move on to happier things, I promise. But uh, I figured I should share that with you guys. Uh, yeah, so. Hey everyone. So it's the next day. Um, I want to explain kind of why. I am a little, or was maybe a little emotional uh, about the house and still am a little, um, yeah, annoyed about it. Um, that's one of the oldest houses in this neighborhood, um, if not the oldest. Uh, there's some debate about that. Um, it's probably from about the 1860s. Um, and it's one of the guys who started the area, uh, John Lawler. Um, so it just, you know, sucks to lose another piece of history. Um, I, I wanna make it clear that nobody was hurt in the fire. Uh, there was a lady who um, had the house, um, and she was kind of living outside of it, like on, there's a wooden porch that was outside, um, and she was living there, she had stuff everywhere, she's probably not mentally all there, and um, she would basically light fires on that porch, um, and I, I'm assuming that's probably what did it. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just sad to lose more history, you know? Uh, St. Louis, uh, my, my neighborhood, uh, just a lot of the US, a lot of these cities um, have just lost so much to carelessness. Um, or in the case of this, in my opinion, just straight stupidity. You don't light a fire in a barrel on a wooden deck. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just sad. and. Um, it makes me, I guess, want to push harder to make sure that, that at least this one gets saved because we don't have a lot left. And uh, it's just, I don't know, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. So yeah, uh, sorry to start this video off on a really, really somber note, but uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it hurts. It sucks, so. Let's go ahead and uh, get into what we're gonna do today. So here we are in the bathroom, the second floor bathroom. Um, and the lime plaster held. 
held actually quite nicely. Um, what I uh, do with the next wall, I am going to get some coarser sand because I do feel that this could be approved upon. But for the purposes of this wall, I don't see any reason to remove it. It is held really well. So sorry, the time-lapse camera did end up dying on me, but we've got the second coat on. I'm waiting for it to dry just a little bit before I go in and float everything smooth. <laughs> sorry about the hiccup. Um, so yeah, that should be uh, almost squared away. Next week, I should be able to get the uh, finishing coat on here and uh, clean up that window, clean up all the trim that belongs to it, and actually put it all back together. That'll be the first... Um, well, first bit of trim that goes back onto the wall, which will be really cool to see. I would like to see a, a window just completely shiny and pretty and perfect, even if it's in a room that isn't. <laughs> but uh, you know, something like that is, is okay because I can tape it off when I go ahead and do the ceiling, so. In other news, guys, a few little updates on some things I got this week. Let me show you what uh, we're working with. So starting things off, I've got some gorgeous windows that just came in fresh off the press, fresh off the Holland Brown equipment. Um, so as you can see, I have four sashes here, two top sashes, two uh, bottom sashes. These specific windows are actually for the uh, maids, uh, uh, not maids hall, the maids room. So these are gonna go there. Um, I have to install them myself, but you see we got the, the area for the chain and everything like that. Uh, they're going to ride on this little groove as a weather seal. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. They're really, really pretty. So, you know, get a little bit of shellac on there and that's going to look real, real nice. So exciting development there. There will be more windows at, coming in as uh, the days go on. Uh, and I'm gonna start working on getting the openings and everything perfect so I can go ahead and slide these bad boys in. So that's the first little bit of news. Next little bit of news is the fact that I have a whole, whole, whole lot of oak. Solid old oak boards. Um, these are actually from a bunch of old church pews, which I know, I, maybe it's uh, inappropriate to do what I've done here, but these were going to end up in the dumpster. Um, they did not want them there anymore, even though I did pay for uh, these guys. Um, it wasn't very much. Now, the thing is with these, where they were, they were on the second floor of the building uh, in a big auditorium area. And uh, because they were 15 foot long and the stairwell was twisted, there was no way to get them out without popping out a window and taking them out. So they had to be cut up. Um, their plan initially was to cut them up with a chainsaw and toss them into a dumpster. Um, but simply put guys, wood is really expensive right now. And uh, I have a bookshelf that I wanna build and I have a bunch of stuff. Uh, this is only half of what I have, by the way, because there are 11 of these pews. Um, so I'm going to build bookshelves with this. I'm, you know, th this is from the area. So the wood was always in the area. It's from uh, you know, my neighborhood. Um, you know, let's repurpose this stuff. And I think this will be, you know, beautiful to put in a lot of the areas. You can see these things. These things are almost like three inches thick here. The ends, I mean, really, really massive pieces of oak here. 
Uh, also quite heavy, and uh, I also paid another price with it because I tweaked my back moving this stuff the other day. So um, maybe for the next week, I'm probably going to be doing stuff that's a little lighter <laughs> uh, work-wise. So maybe more stripping, less uh, plastering because carrying the plaster upstairs is, uh, yeah, it's a workout and it's a little rough on my back. So I'm gonna let that heal up a little and go from there. Uh, hopefully nobody's too mad at me for uh, utilizing the pews, um, you know, but like I said, uh, I, I am saving the lumber and it will, you know, go back. I mean, this little end here, which would have been the back of the, uh, the pew, this little rounded bit here actually might be perfect for uh, if I cut one of these off for the maid's uh, stairwell or maid stairwell handrail. So, you know, like all these pieces are going to be beautiful. And uh, I'll be showing you as a sketch at some point of what I have planned for the library bookshelves because uh, I'm starting to get really excited about that project. I think you guys are going to really like it. Now, about these uh, double sided doors, the ones that are different woods on both sides. Um, so I actually found the seam. It is really, really faint. But you can see that little line there where it's color changing. So this is the pine and this is the cherry. But you can see just that little thin, uh, probably about, oh, maybe a little more than, or a little less than a quarter inch thick. Just that seam right there all the way up. So it's odd to me that they would have went with the pine on this side, which is a cheaper wood. <laughs> Um, and made it the thinner, you know, well, it's not quite a veneer because it's a little thicker than a veneer. Veneers are really, really thin. Um, and then the cherry being the bulk of the door, which is kind of crazy to me. And I'm assuming the, each panel is just split down the middle, you know, so, you know, half of it's here, half of it's here. They stuck the two halves together, put them in the, uh, the slot, put the trim on, called it a day. So uh, also for those of you who uh, might think that the desk was a little bit of a, a time suck, uh, it's actually not. It's a great learning tool because check this out. This is the stairwell. Um, this is the, uh, you know, obviously the, uh, the hand, this is obviously, you know, the handrail bit. Um, this is actually a piece of the flooring uh, that I use in the maids hall, um, but it's uh, the same pine that, um, well, it's everywhere in the house. Um, this is all oak, by the way, the stairwell's all oak. But if you check the colors out, they're very similar. So I know that this is the right color to use for the rest of the house. So uh, yeah, win for the Garnet shellac. Uh, should be perfect for all of the trim in the house. And as you can see, guys, I already ran a few little test pieces. Um, now, obviously, these are actual pieces of the house and we'll be going back up. Uh, and these aren't waxed yet. That's why they're so very, very shiny. Um, with the wax, it has more of a, a glow to it. So, uh, but this is about the color most of the woodwork, at least in the library, is going to go. Uh, this here is actually from the maid's window, one of the little rosettes. But as you can see, and this has a few less coats on it. But uh, as you can see, it's really, really a pretty color. We can, you know, compare the wood. I mean, that's actually a piece that would go like that. That's actually, I think, the piece for it. But as you can see, like, yeah, it's gonna be really, really nice. So, pretty, pretty happy with that. This also does seem to darken a little bit over time. As you can see with uh, the pine piece here, it has darkened a little bit. Uh, it seems like this will as well. Also, it seems like the desk did a little bit as well. A little darker now. But, you know, so ultra pretty. Can't wait to all the woodwork in the house looks like that. So you might be asking yourself as well, what has Caleb actually been doing all week? Well, a lot of the week has been spent obviously with the desk, but a good portion of the week also, probably about two days has been spent getting every little bit of paint off of this. Uh, now, mostly it's in the crevices that I'm having trouble with because, well, beadboard has a bead and in the beads, yeah, it's really rough to get all the paint out of there, and it takes a lot of trial and error. Um, but I am getting very, very close to this all being done, and so I'm hoping next week that I can uh, go ahead and actually shellac this whole wall here in the stairwell, because wouldn't that be cool? Let me, just so you can see how, uh, 
how much there really is up here. Checking out, we're gonna get a sneaky Kim up there. Hi. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a big wall. And uh, yeah, it's gonna look awesome. And then at some point further down the road, once I got all the walls done with plaster, we'll do with all the stairs, all the trim here. And uh, yeah, the maid stair will start to look nice again. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for me this week. Uh, I know it's not as much progress as uh, I personally would like, and I'm sure some of you guys would have liked to have seen as well. Um, but things are moving along. Um, the learning curves are getting shorter. Uh, I'm getting better at a lot of these things. Um, and you know, practice makes perfect. And so uh, this week was a lot of practice, a lot of stripping, um, moving a bunch of oak around, <laughs> which uh, was a serious amount of that, uh, overdoing it there. Um, yeah, getting the windows in. I mean, there's a lot of things bubbling up this week. And, um, you know, of course, uh, not everything's happy about this week uh, with the house and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, overall, things are moving along. Um, I'm getting better, getting quicker. And, uh, yeah, we're going to make a, a really good run of this place. We're, I'm really going to make this place shine again. And uh, I think through seeing something like the desk and, and some of the other things that are starting to come through, I can... I can really see, you know, I've always had it in my mind what it's going to look like, but I'm really starting to actually be able to see it. And I think that's really cool. So uh, yeah, uh, we'll hit it hard next week, guys. A lot of awesome stuff coming up then. I think there's gonna be some major changes, um, at least visually. I think um, some of the pieces will start coming together. And uh, yeah, it should be exciting. So I'll see you guys then again, as always. Thank you guys so, so very much for uh, sticking with us. And uh, we'll see you guys again next week. Bye-bye.